Hey everybody, it's Friday. It's video day. I'm back with you after my terrible cold. I'm so glad to be back with you because today I want to talk to you about something that's really important. Something that you really need to consider. Something that presents a challenge to you as a jewelry maker. We know that these days there are a lot of pieces out there that are repurposed. There are a lot of books about doing repurposing. Nothing wrong with that. I've seen beautiful work. Some people are masters at it. And, and if you're one of them, my hat's off to you. It is a wonderful thing to bring lost piece back to life so that it's not totally lost forever. Bring it back like a little lost sheep. That's good. Um, but what isn't good, and I think a lot of us are in agreement with this, is to take a piece that could be repaired or has some value or is perfectly good all on its own and just tear it up and make it into a piece of jewelry. Um, I've even said like on some of the old Hong Kong stuff and flower power pins and stuff like that, like, oh, well, who cares? They're so common. But you know what? That's what will make them uncommon. They'll get all broken up. We won't have them in their original state. And it's kind of a shame, too, with flower power pins in a way, although I've done this myself, so my jury's still out a little bit. You know, those parts are still made, and we're not the only website that has them. There's, I mean, that tooling is up, up and running. So maybe <clears throat> you could challenge yourself instead of repurposing a piece or repurposing the focal or the main part, maybe purposing it. Now, what, what am I talking about? Well, let me see if I can explain. Um, if you see this, this piece right here, this is a really good example. Let me move this. Now, I just made this this week. Nothing in this piece was removed from an old piece to make the composition. This piece has a ton of vintage in it. ton of old Hong Kong. Uh, old Hong Kong beads. Bakelite discs. I bought these off of eBay, I don't know how many years ago. Somebody had some old store stock and drilled them. These actually, you might think, oh, old. No, no. They still make them. They still make them. This is old Hong Kong. This is a real treasure. I have just a few of these in my own private stash. If you ever see me offer these for sale, grab them. Because <laughs> these are wonderful old Hong Kong trinkets. With little green eyes, green eyes. But I didn't take it off anything else. This is new old. I found it in a warehouse. This piece was completely put together by me from vintage components. Not taken off of another piece. So this is really, I can really say this is, this is my composition. Uh, I made this. I had the parts and I put it together and it's, there's nothing hard here, you know. Uh, it's just little pieces like this. <clears throat> By the way, again, these flowers are new. Look old, don't they? They still make them. The backs are old. Here's one with a propeller. Now that is a Bakelite button, which maybe I shouldn't have used because these are becoming more valuable. Um, but just to show you what you can do. So, okay, so maybe you can't get this Bakelite disc. Can you make that out of polymer clay? Yeah, you could. You could definitely do that. Um, here's another piece, purposed. I put this together from, from vintage style stampings. This is not a flower power pen that has been taken apart. This is a layered piece that I have colorized my way. This is a vintage button in the middle. The shank was wrecked, so it could have become a ring top or a focal, so it did. These beads, let me see. These beads are all new except for the pearls, which are vintage Japanese. I got them in a warehouse. So this would be what I would call a purposed piece. <coughs> um... This piece, curiously, I would call repurposed. Why would that be? Well, it's because this chain I made a long, 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 long time ago. And it had something else on it, and I didn't like it. So I repurposed my own jewelry. And I would encourage you to do that. If you have a piece that's just not worked out that great for you, why not take it apart and start over? I did, and then I added this beautiful china um, pendant, which I found in a warehouse. And I only wish I could get more of them because they were so wonderful. 
but that's where I repurposed my own jewelry. Now, let me ask you this. <clears throat> Would you repurpose this piece? What's going on with this? Is this like... Would you? Would you take this apart maybe for the links or for the flowers? Maybe. Is there anything that you see here that isn't quite right? I do. This clasp isn't original. It would have had a larger, darker metal clasp on it. This piece, I do not know where it was made. I don't think it was made in the United States, so I don't see a maker's mark on it. Uh, although for the age of it, it should have one. So maybe it is. Um, these are like really, really heavy gilding weight brass that have a uh, silver plate. This is probably like really stinking full of nickel. And these links are probably really, really full of lead. So would you repurpose this? Well, that's your call. I wouldn't. And the reason I wouldn't is because the only thing that's wrong with it is this clasp isn't original. And now that I'm sensitive to metal content, I don't know that I'd want to take something that I knew had lead in it, and I'm, I'm almost positive this does, and make something else for somebody to wear. So I just keep it in my collection. So back in the box it goes. I like looking at it. Period. The end. Here's another purposed piece. This is American Made Brass Stamping. You might recognize it from one of my colorization videos. I put it on a bezel, bent this out so that I could attach a very large jump, jump ring, and I attached beautiful old plastic beads. These are all old that I got from a friend, and um, I put them together with wire my way. So from the ground up, I built this piece, although it's using vintage product, but it's all bisou. It's not something else torn up. Not to say that if you are repurposing that you're, you know, technically doing something wrong. I'm just saying consider telling yourself, challenge yourself to the next step. Build your focal instead of take it from something else. Although, a pretty focal, why waste it? Yeah, I know. But let's challenge ourselves. Let's maybe build our, our focals if we can. Um, here's kind of a cool piece that <clears throat> I wanted to show you. This isn't repurposed in any way. This is from New Components, made from vintage tooling. It's got seven little owls on it. This is a real popular finding. I put vintage glass eyes on him. And then he is just on a bracelet bank blank that we carry on the website that's very, very popular. And this is very fluid, as you can see. Look at this. See how fluid that is? This reminds me very much of late 50s, early 60s jewelry. Kind of elegant jewelry. Maybe a little bit better than dime store, five and dime style. But if I took a few more links and added to this, which I could by breaking one of these up, I could easily make a wreath style necklace. And I could probably find a way to make earrings. And I could have a full owl perure, which would be really cool right now because owls are hot. That's a good motif. So I wanted to share that with you. Now here's one that I made in a vintage style. I have to get some clips for these because I thought I still carried them and evidently I don't. So I'll have them soon. But anyway, a lot of jewelry in the 50s and 60s from some lines like Sarah Coventry, Park Lane, they had clever things that they did. And this, it was a lot like this where I got my idea. This is a bracelet, just like the owls. It's only, it's on an 18 millimeter blank. And you see, it comes right off of there. So now, unfortunately, this doesn't fit my wrist to come around and make something else. So now I really can't use that. If I'd made it longer, maybe I could have made it a necklace. But then this hung too long, so it wasn't good. But anyway, you see, I've just put florets, little rosettes. We carry these on the site a little tube riveted, and then I put the ceramic rose into it. Now I've got a nice bracelet. So I can have either a necklace or earrings. So I've always appreciated something that was made that had a little bit of a gizmo thing to it. You know, something that you could do a little more with it. This would be something like that. Maybe you guys can come up with a better idea. I'm sure you can because I did this kind of hurriedly this week. 
Um, this is a purposed and repurposed piece. You might laugh. <laughs> but I had a six pack and um, drank some of it. And I took a cap and made a, a focal, put it on a bezel. I took some of the box and put it under glass with some vintage Czech hand blown lemons. And I have a Mike's Hard Lemonade necklace. Five and dime? I don't know. Altered, definitely. Repurposed and purposed, for sure. <laughs> this is fun. Anyway, let's talk about some other piece, pieces. Should you, should you not. We've got some prom jewelry here. Simple rhinestone earrings from the 50s. Let me get them so you can see them. You might say, not signed. Go ahead, put them in something. Really? There's nothing wrong with these guys. These are great. Yes, someone might want these one day. Think of all the Victorian jewelry that was out there that we only have one of or are broken, all the beautiful jet pieces. Because at one time, Victorian jewelry, like back in the 40s and 50s, nobody wanted it. And now, try finding a pair of earrings, especially at any kind of price, you know. I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. My, that's my, my vintage jewelry background heart talking to you. Don't do it. Same way on these. These are cast metal. They're enameled. Beautifully done. 60s stuff. Maybe a little bit later than that. In excellent condition. No name on them anywhere. So you might say eh, break the back off. Let's do something else with it. I wouldn't. Why? It's fine. Make your own. <laughs> That's my feeling. Here's another one. Very thin metal stampings here, very easily put together. Uh, you know, I don't know. This doesn't seem to be very important, but I'm looking at it. You're not going to be able to see this, but it says Emmons on the back. Emmons, um, low end jewelry. This is 50s, 60s. But it's not broke, guys, and somebody might have the other pieces to this perver because they would have made a necklace, they would have made earrings, they would have made a bracelet. Why not save this for them? Put it on eBay. That's what I say. Here's another one. There's a lot of stones out of this. What would you do with it? Would you cabbage the chain and do something else? Take the middle out? Do something else? You could because there are actually holes there for you to attach. Would you do it though? This is a bog off piece. This is worth a little money. I think I would reset the stones. I don't think I would break this up. Learn a little bit about names. Go to the library. Get some books. Go to Barnes & Noble. Start yourself a library. Maybe next week we'll do a little bit of video and I'll do a little bit of book review. And you guys can learn a little bit about the books that I like and I've learned from. Because they are my total inspiration for everything I do. I learned to make jewelry from reading those books. Just looking at the pictures and trial and error. That sort of thing. One last piece I wanted to show you is this. What would you do with this? Might, that'd make a nice focal, wouldn't it? And some of the beads are kind of messed up. But you know what, guys? This is an unsigned piece of Miriam Haskell. It might have been supposed to be an earring. It might have been off of a necklace. I, I revere Miriam Haskell so much. There's no way on this world that I would make anything from that. Now, maybe I should, because I could give it new life, so maybe I'm wrong, and you might disagree, but I just kind of feel like if you get a, a piece of Haskell, and you know it's Haskell, or you feel like it probably is, save it for a Haskell collector, because they're always trying to put things together, and it's getting harder and harder. That's my feeling, but you can do this kind of work. So maybe just examine the piece really well, save it for a teaching piece, and teach yourself how to cage. I think that's the ultimate right there that you might want to do. As you can see, you can still buy vintage rhinestones today. We still have some lots bulk at the site. Um, they're getting harder to come by, but you can get plenty of stuff to replace or use for design, and that's fine. Um, there are other things that we could talk about and I could show you, but we're running out of time for today. But I hope this gets you maybe expanding your journey a little bit, thinking more about purposing. Use vintage components that are loose and see how you can put them together in a very, very new century way. Give it a shot. See what you come up with. Let me know. I'm very interested.